going to show you how to fill up your keg with homebrew and force carbonate it. What I'm doing here now is I have a beer that's fermented out for over two and a half weeks and I'm transferring it over into my keg. Once it's done filling up, I'm going to seal it up and throw it in my fridge to get it cold before I force carbonate. Force carbonate our keg. What we're going to do is we're going to actually force carbonate through our dip tube. The tip tube is the uh, tube that reaches from the bottom of the keg and actually goes out now through the pop. Force there. carbonation stage of kegging. Um, we're actually going to force carbonate through your out liquid ball lock. You have two different ball locks for your keg. You're going to have your gray, which is your gas in, and you're going to have your black, which is your liquid out. Uh, my trick for force carbonating my keg, I like to uh, force carbonate through the dip tube, which we showed you earlier. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure my CO2 shut off. You're going to remove your gray gas in and attach your black liquid out here. I am going to put it on the liquid out. I am going to turn on my CO2 here. And I'm going to apply pressure to all the way about 30 PSI, 35 PSI. And what I do is I apply this pressure and shake my keg, I'd say, for a good few minutes. And I let this pressure sit on my keg for anywhere from, I'd say, about 15 to 24 hours. And what that does is over that period of time, your cold beer will absorb that CO2 and, and will actually absorb the CO2 carbonating your beer instead of you actually having to prime it like you would in a bottle. Um, my next step here is I'm going to put it back in the refrigerator and wait 24 hours. We have now force carbonated our beer over a 24-hour period uh, while it was in the refrigerator. Um, we force carbonated it from the bottom up using the outspout ball lock. What I'm going to do now here is I'm going to reverse my fittings and tap my beer. It's very important that you actually remove the ball lock before you remove the fittings because it'll squirt all over the place. So uh, here we go. I'm going to remove my out. you shut off your CO2. I'm going to attach my gas line in. Back off the pressure on my CO2 all the way off for now. I'm going to bleed out some of the extra CO2 that is in my keg because your keg is holding all this pressure in there and it's just going to come out exploding. So you got to be a little careful with this. I go gently because sometimes it can come squirting out. If you don't have a release valve, you can actually use the end portion of your poppet and slowly push it here. But again, just be careful because if it's overly full, it's going to squirt out on you. Plug in the out. I'm going to take a picture, and I usually run off a few because you're going to get some yeast that was on the uh, on the bottom of the keg that's going to run out first here. It looks like it's still coming out a little heavy, so I'm going to release a little bit more CO2. Now I'm going to add my CO2 tank back in through the end. I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to run it out. I like to run mine at about 5 psi. out a little foamy at, uh, at first, but it will settle down. And there you go. You have force carbonating your beer through a uh, corny keg using your CO2. Again, it takes about 24 hours and the beer comes out delicious every time. Please join us for more video tutorials on youcanbrewit.com.
Cheers.